I want to make this video for young single Christian men. I'm talking specifically to you. I, I growing up as a, a young single Christian man, I did have a marriage that lasted five years. But prior to that, I was single for quite a long time. I was single right up to the age of 28, having very little relationship experience with, with women. And uh, to be honest with you, that's quite the norm these days. Uh, I think, I think more millennial people, generation Z, whatever, young people uh, are less and less interested in relationships and more and more interested in pursuing their careers and pursuing their passions, which is absolutely fine. No issue at all. I know how difficult it is to be a teenager, to be someone in their 20s and not have any success with the opposite sex. I know how difficult it is and I, I wouldn't have considered myself at that time to be a terrible catch. I wouldn't say, you know, I, I can't trust myself to say I'll be a good catch, but I don't think that there was anything blindly. I mean, as a teenager, I was very, very, very quiet and that didn't help. I, I also was quite miserable. But in my 20s, when I met Jesus, things changed for me. And I was less miserable. I was finding myself, finding out who I was as a human being. But I found that I still didn't have that much success. And I think that sometimes was to do with my, sometimes I was socially inept with women at the time, around that time, and had to learn. And I was a slow learner, really, in that respect. So I know how difficult it is when you're a young, single Christian man and no women are interested in you, you can't get any success with women, and it's really, really difficult. I want to make this video for you to encourage you and let you know that you're not alone, and also some misconceptions that society might tell you about relationships. I don't want you, as a single man, to be so thirsty that you just fall for the, the first woman that pops up on your chat window. I don't want you to do that, right? I want you to be a Christian man who's strong in the Lord, is strong in his identity, strong in his level of self-respect, and not just somebody who's going to so thirsty for a sexual relationship to get with a Christian woman, that he just goes for the first person that he meets. And that can often lead to a disaster, really. You can have a disastrous relationship if you just end up going with a woman you perhaps maybe not don't even love, you may not love her, but she she's somebody who's providing an interest in you and uh, is making you feel good about yourself. And you think, oh, finally, somebody's taken notice of me. Somebody wants to settle down with me. And you jump straight into a relationship with that person. As far as I'm concerned, that's the worst thing you can do. Now, I'm not advocating that men should never get married or that the single life is the way always for men to go. It says quite clearly in the Bible, whoever finds himself a wife, finds himself a good thing. You know, being married is good. It's, it's biblical. But what people often forget or they neglect is, is that being single is also very good in the Bible. The Bible quite honestly says it is it's quite good for a man to be single. He can please the Lord more. He can do more for the Lord. But we live in a society both inside and outside of the church, which makes you feel very, 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 very inadequate if you do not have a girlfriend, a fiancé or a marriage partner. That's true. It, it happens. People can't deny it. You are made to feel worthless, inadequate, like you're less of a man if you don't have that lady on your arm, if you don't have that interest by Christian women to think you're a good catch and you're a good bloke to be married to, so on and so forth. OK? Now, I've got a problem with that for, for a number of reasons. Firstly, it makes an idol out of getting a woman. It makes uh, wanting to get a woman, wanting to be with a woman, quite an idolatrous thing, a prospect, really. It makes women out to be trophies, things to be won, which, of course, women aren't that. Women are human beings that deserve respect to be treated like human beings. They're not a trophy for you to win. But society, both inside and outside of the church, teaches you that you've got to have a woman. You've got to find a woman. You know, 
uh, otherwise you're not complete. You get these, the at weddings you go to, you get these sort of aunts and uh, uncles, not necessarily my aunts and uncles, I'm not saying they said that, but you get like parents, aunts and uncles, different people coming to you saying, oh you haven't found anyone yet? Oh dear, well there's someone out there for you, there's someone for you. And this is quite burdensome. For the young single man, I, I, I do understand that young single women go through that as well, and it can be quite intense for them as well. But I'm talking to single men in this video because I've been a single man right up to the age of 28, okay? And now again, I'm a, I'm a single man. I'm quite used to, I'm quite enjoying that, being a single man, and I quite, I love it. To be honest, I love my space, I love my privacy, I love the fact that I can just do basically, you know, what I want. I mean, as a Christian, do what God wants. But what I mean to say is if I want to whack some music on and put my headphones on, I can do that. You know, I can do lots of these different things without having to worry about what a woman might think about it. So that's why a lot of men, they get married quite early and then they think, what have I done? I sacrificed this single life, this freedom, because... I thought that marriage was going to be better. Now, don't get me wrong, marriage is very, very good, but I don't believe it's better than the single life. I, I really don't. And I would argue with someone to the cows come home over that point. I do not believe being married is better than being single. OK, I know that you as a single man may want children sometime. You may want to have uh, sons and daughters of your own. Personally, I'm not bothered about that myself. OK. Children are wonderful, I'm not disputing, I'm not saying children are a terrible thing or anything like that. And if you want to have children, I understand. I don't want you to think, oh John's, I don't want you to be on your deathbed at, at 60, 70, 80 and say, oh that John, I watched his video and he talked me out of marriage, I wonder what it would have been like to be with a woman. If you feel like that, fine, but you need to understand certain things about how things go, okay? It is not essential for you to be with a woman, okay? If you want to be with a woman, what I would suggest that you do is that you work very hard on yourself. You find passions, you start writing. If you don't want to be a writer, you be part of a music band. You, you get as many passions as you can without becoming too overwhelmed and too over busy. Get to know Jesus personally as your personal Lord and Saviour. Read the Bible, pray, praise and worship him. Make sure your, your walk with the Lord is always very strong. And also, as I said, follow passions. Find out what you're good at and follow it. If you really want to be with a woman, a, a Christian woman, that's what you need to do. You need to, I would say 50, 60, even 70% of being with a woman and being successful with a woman has nothing to do with women. Nothing to do with what women think about you, say about you, or anything like that. What it has to do with is that what you make of your life. And I wish I'd known this truth much earlier in my life. Then I would have accelerated the following of my passions, so on and so forth, to be the better man. But essentially, you shouldn't do those things to get a woman. But at least if you are making yourself valuable in other people's eyes, if you are following your passions ardently, if you have a strong relationship with God, if you're doing the best you can do with your appearance, then you will have a selection of women that may end up being scared that you'll reject them. Now, it's very important with a relationship that the person you want to go with has some sort of fear that you might reject them. Not that you will reject them. I'm not expecting you as a Christian man to be someone who takes delight in rejecting other people or women for romance. That's not very good. But I think if, if the woman you're going with doesn't at all fear any rejection from you that you could reject her even though you may not but that you could I think that spells a disaster because it means that you're not valuable enough uh, for her you need to be somebody who, who when she sees your life she thinks if you know with him I don't want him to reject me okay now I'm not saying you will reject her and you, and you probably shouldn't if she's the kind the right person for you okay nobody should take delight in rejecting other people it's just wrong okay and when we have to reject people it's often much harder than if we if we ourselves are being rejected 
I often in my life have come to the conclusion now I'd rather be rejected than be the one that is the rejecter. I find it much harder now to reject other people than for me to be rejected because over my life I suffered so much rejection that, it, that I've learned to deal with it. I've learned to deal with it, I've learned to deal with the baggage that has come with that kind of rejection. Um, and I've learned to to cope in, in in a cope with that so it doesn't affect my character or my outlook on life. So because of that, rejection isn't such a, an issue for me uh, in my life at the moment. It used to be when I was a teenager and I was early 20, I suffered from rejection terribly. I, I, I was very hateful and, and hurtful and, and not... You know, I was I was secretly sullen about it. But growing up, you you learn to deal with it. You learn to forgive. You learn to get on with life. You learn to be the person you're supposed to be without the baggage. You know, it's all a learning curve. So very very important that you realise that you do not have to get married. I understand you want to get married. I get that. I understand you want to get married. Great. Okay. I'm not going to talk you out of that. All I'm saying is, is you, you do not have to. Society does not have a right to say to you, you have to get married, whether it's inside the church or outside the church, okay? There's nothing wrong with women. There's nothing wrong with being married to the right woman. But she needs to be the right woman. She needs to be a godly woman. She needs to be a woman that um, follows uh, the godliness that, that she is. She needs to be a woman that respects you. Because too much in society at the moment, inside and outside the church, I see too many um, young people, and I'm not, not talking about gender now, but young people do not respect their respective gender. They don't respect them. I get women who don't respect men. I get men who don't respect women. And sometimes I just feel like bashing their heads together. I really do. Just simply respect. But people have this philosophy which I actually feel is wrong, that you always have to earn a person's respect before they respect you. I don't agree with that. For the simple reason is, how do you earn somebody's respect? You are what you are. You do what you do. You have opinions that you have opinions. You're not going to tailor your opinions to suit someone so that that person will respect you, right? That's not the way you live life, okay? I give my respect to people freely, and you should too. You give your respect to a person freely, and then if they abuse that respect, then they have to earn your respect. But you should always be willing to give other people a basic respect. I do not agree with this thing, you disrespect people until they earn it. I, I don't agree with that. And if relationships get built on that, it spells disaster, as far as I'm concerned. It spells absolute disaster. You need to see someone and say, I'm going to respect you. It's a conscious decision. It's a conscious decision to respect other people. It's really, really, really important that. So, bringing all these things together, um, I think it's really important that you realise that you do not need a woman, okay? You may want a woman, you may desire a woman, but you do not need a woman. Women do not like men who are needy and thirsty. They don't, because it's a turn-off. It's a real turn-off. If you're going approaching every woman in the youth group or every woman in the church, it's, it's a problem. People think, well, you're not there to worship God. You're not there to read the Bible. You're just where to, there to pick up women. You're just a Christian version of PUA. Don't do that. Don't go to different churches trying to pick up women. If conversations happen naturally, fine. Don't stop it from happening. Let it flow. But don't go looking. If a woman gives you uh, uh, the eyes over the other side of the room, that may be a cue to go and talk to her. Okay. But if a woman's closed off, just accept it. She's closed off, she doesn't want to talk to you. So, you know, this is really important. Another really important aspect for you, if you're looking to get married, is you need to have self-respect. You need to respect yourself. Too many Christian men these days do not respect themselves. And that, I'm talking about married men here as well. You do not respect yourself. And there's some married men, I know they're not probably not going to be watching this video because it's for single people. Some married men, their wife wears the trousers. Their wife dominates them. Their wife bosses them about. Well, I know. I know it happens. I've seen it with my own eyes. Their wives boss them about. And I'm thinking, where's your self-respect? I'm not saying you should divorce the woman. But goodness, you've got to say, look, there's a problem. You're not respecting me. Yeah? 
respect. Self-respect is saying, look, um, I'm not going to take what other people say about me personally. That's a big aspect of self-respect. The, the thing about respecting yourself is not to take yourself too personally. So, for instance, if someone insults you, someone calls you you loser, you find some funny way to respond. You don't take it to heart, right? That's their opinion. Your opinion is that you're made in the image of Christ Jesus. You're made in the image of God. You're going somewhere because you've got a relationship with God, okay? Or with Jesus Christ. So you don't have to take on what people are saying about you uh, being a loser or being uh, uh, a failure with women and all this sort of jazz, okay? There may be things you're doing wrong, but to someone to call you a complete failure with women is, is not the truth. It's, it's, it's just not true. People what might want those things to be true is people want to say things that are a bit edgy. You know, they want to reject people in a bit of an edgy way. They want to um, say things that are going to make people sit up. You know, it, it seems to be all wrong. They, they don't think about who they're hurting, these people. They really don't. Okay? So those are fundamental aspects. One, you don't need a woman. You may want a woman, and that's fine. Whoever finds yourself a wife finds yourself a good thing. Fine. You should respect yourself. Before you go anywhere near a single woman, you should respect yourself. I talk from failure, okay? I didn't respect myself growing up. I didn't respect myself until well into my 20s, okay? That wasn't very good, okay? So I'm speaking to you, not from a place of having succeeded, from a place of having failed. I'm telling you, I don't want you to fail the same way I did. I don't want you to fall over the same way I did. I'm saying this because I care for you enough to say, don't fall into the same bear traps that I did, okay? Right? Have some self-respect. Realise that um, your, your whole character, your whole life doesn't hinge on what women say about you or what other people in the church say about you or what people in the world say about you. You need to, you need to lean on what Jesus Christ through his word is saying about you and concentrate on that. And you need to believe that. That's really, really, really important. Have enough self-respect to, to say, if a woman's not interested in you, say, that's fine. Okay, you're not interested in me, that's okay. If she wants to be friends and you don't want to be friends, then say, I don't want to be your friend. I'm sorry, I'm not being rude. It's just that I've got too much going on in my life. I'm too busy for another friend. That's the end of it. I think there's a big difference between the friend zone and a woman wanting to be your friend. The friend zone is a place where a woman tries to put you so that if you become more valuable later on, she can then show a vested interest in you. You're not a puppet on a string. You don't have to do that. If you want to be in the friend zone, be in the friend zone. But at the end of the day, that's not the same as you being her friend, okay? I do accept that men can be friends with women. Okay, I do accept that. If you meet a woman and you hit it off but not romantically, you can be a friend. She's not put you in the friend zone. You are just friends. You've not thought about romance. You're friends, okay? But if there's a situation where you really, really fancy a girl, right? And she says, no, I just want to be your friend. No, I'm sorry. Why should you have to face that woman every day, every week as friends when, you, when she's rejected you? No, 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 no. It's not happening like that. You can if you want. If you want to be like that, go, go ahead. I personally wouldn't, okay? Not if I was a young man. At the age I am now, I might not think there's any problem with it. Let a, let a friend zone me. But as a young man, right, you've got, you're more on fire with your hormones and your sexual desires than I am at 36 here talking to you today. I get that. You don't want to be friend zoned. You don't want to be in some woman's friend zone. I get that. So don't. Choose not to be. Have a backbone. Say I'm not going to do that. And the thing is, if a woman's offended by you, being politely having a backbone, then, then there's something wrong with her, not you, quite frankly. Okay? So, have a bit of respect for yourself. Have a backbone, right? Stand up for you. You don't have to be a bad boy. You don't have to be a nasty boy. You don't have to be nasty to women, right? Be polite. Be uh, what my grandmother called bekovert, which is a Jewish word for friendly, welcoming, so on and so forth. Be bekovert, okay? That's fine. No, no problem at all. So, to recap, you don't need a woman. Have some self-respect. Have a backbone, right? And, the thirdly, I want to talk more about passions. Have passions 
and pursue them ardently. Find out what you're good at. Get involved in a sport. Do something that takes your mind off of women. For goodness sakes, man, I know how difficult it is to be sexually charged up and want to be in a relationship, to want to have a girlfriend. And that pressure can be overwhelming. Without what society says, we're men. We have hormones. We have sexual desires. We have uh, uh, things within ourselves when we're young. We just want a girl. We want a girlfriend. We want. We want to experience that that French kiss. We want to get married and have sex. We want to do these things. And there's nothing sinful about it. But if you only want a woman to have those things, then that is sinful because women are to be loved, not to be lusted after. So to take your mind off the lusting over women, which is a sin anyway, get involved in some some passions. Do something. Learn the keyboard. Learn the piano. Learn the guitar. Uh, learn to write. Um, get involved in the career option that, that is most you, like care work or something like that. Do something that takes your mind off of women, because the world don't revolve around women. The world doesn't revolve around you either, right? But it's cert your world certainly shouldn't revolve around women, okay? I'm not saying that if there's a woman you like, you shouldn't pursue some sort of romantic interest. Again, I'm not trying to throw you off marriage. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't get married. Do so. Another thing, be financially prepared. Make sure you can find, and I'm talking from failure here, right? Be financially prepared, because I wasn't when I got involved in the marriage. I wasn't financially prepared, okay? But I'm telling you that you need to be. As a man who's been through a marriage, right, I'm telling you you need to be financially prepared, okay? You need to have savings. Start saving at 16. Continue to save, put £10, five. £50, whatever, away. Whatever you can, put it away, right? Towards a deposit. Because money will make and break a marriage. You can be the most in love people in the world and, marriage, uh, and money can destroy your marriage. I'm telling you now it can, okay? So make sure that you are, are financially suitable for marriage before time not. If that means you don't get married till you're 30, fine. Okay, that's, that's okay. But make sure you put money away. This is really, really important. And even if you don't want to get married, right, put money away anyway. Save up money. I wish I had learnt this sooner. I didn't save a penny when I was younger, and I deeply regret it. I deeply regret it. Okay? Don't be like me. Don't do what I did. Just follow my advice, will you? Put some money away. Uh, put the money in the bank. Let uh, ISAs, let it collect interest. In invest it, but only invest it securely. Okay? Just be, you know, get some advice from an older person about uh, investing money and be very, very wise with a credit card. I'm not saying you shouldn't get a credit card. It's always good to get a credit card because then people can see that you manage credit. But get a credit card, pay something off a little bit each month, and then people can see that steadily you're managing credit. So you're somebody who, who is able to manage finance. Then you get more offers and things, but you have to be very careful about the offers that you take up. But it also is good for when you do get a house and do put down a mortgage, you'll get a good mortgage rate because you've, been, you've shown you're good at managing credit. So I, I, I would say that you shouldn't get more than two credit cards. And I'm speaking from experience. I had about six credit cards. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't, it didn't end well. I'm not going to say on here how it ended, but it didn't end well, okay? Have two credit cards, only two credit cards. Right, don't have more than that, right? Be financially responsible before you, you do any marriage with a woman, okay? I don't agree with prenups. I think prenups are for people that don't trust their partner. I know a lot of people will argue with me, but in the church, you shouldn't have to sign a prenup, okay, before a marriage. I, I, just, think, I, I just think you should screen women better rather than having a prenup. You really need to screen the woman that you're going to be with very very well and that's the next point i'm going to come on to you need to make sure that you uh run compliance tests for her. now what i mean by compliance tests is uh com women will compliance test you if they want a relationship with you they'll compliance test you what that means is is they will run little tests to see if you're a real man okay you need to run little tests to see if she's a real christian woman okay don't just take what a woman says and what, how a woman behaves as at face value, because that can cost you, okay? I'm not saying that women are naturally untrustworthy or that the woman that you want to be with can't be trusted. You can't just leave it to that. You need to run little tests and be satisfied 
with the results of those tests. Now, what I mean by little tests, I don't mean tests that cause her to feel uncomfortable or whatnot. Ask her straightforward questions. What's your favourite Bible verse? What's your worst Bible verse? Uh, where, how did you become a Christian? If she's saying, oh, well, I grew up in a Christian home. Oh, well, I like all the Bible. Oh, well, I like John 3.16. Then probably she ain't got spirituality, mate. I know that sounds judgmental, but you want a good Christian woman. You want a Christian woman who's on fire for God, who's on fire for Jesus, surely, right? Because that's what you uh, are desiring to be. So if that's what you need to ask the right questions. Because if you don't, you could end up with anybody, right? You need to ask the right questions. Don't be captivated all the time by a beauty, right? She needs to have a character and she needs to have a relationship with Jesus, okay? She needs to have a godly character. I'm not saying she needs to be a wallflower who's always submitting to men all the time. I'm not saying that, okay? I know in this day and age, 2018, the biblical principle of submitting to your husband is, is a taboo. It's, it's poo-hoo, okay? I'm not going to get into that in this video, okay? Because I think it's a topic for altogether another video. But if she is not humble, if she's not, and I don't mean humble towards men, I mean having a humble spirit. If she's not a humble person, if she is not somebody who is kind and considerate to others, right? Why, why would you want to be with somebody like that, right? You need to screen her. You need to find out, was there a time when you helped out a charity? Uh, was there a time when you helped a homeless person? Tell me about that. Tell me about what, what happened there. And if it's a, then forget it. Cut and run, mate. Get with a woman who's worthy of you, not who's not worthy of you, okay? Don't put up with second best. Put up with the best. And if you can't find the best, stay single. My advice to you, if you cannot find the best woman for you, don't marry another woman. Stay single. Please stay single, okay? I'm making this quite clear to you. By all means, pursue a girl. By all means, get married. But get married to the best woman. I'm 36. I've already had a marriage. But even now, if I want to settle down with someone, I'm not going to settle down with anything less than second best. And if I can't... Uh, sorry, sorry, the best, rather. And if I can't find anything other than second best, I ain't settling down. I'm not. I'd rather be single than be married and set, settle for second best. And I, I think that's true. should be true for women as well. I don't believe women should settle for second best either. Okay? But you as a man should not settle for second best. Okay? I'm not settling for second best. And I'm not, I'm not God's gift to women. Right? So if the best woman for me doesn't want me, fine. I'll be single. You should do too. Okay? But try and make the best of your life. If you need to lose a bit of weight, lose a bit of weight. Have a haircut or whatever. Okay? Do what you need to do to be the best version of you that you can be. Okay? Follow your passions. Follow them ardently. So it's very important to screen a woman. Okay? I know I went off on a tangent. So screening a woman, asking the right questions. Observe her. Observe how she interacts with other people. She's allowed to have a little tantrum here and there. She's allowed to have a bit of a time where she doesn't act as she should do, because none of us do. None of us are perfect. None of us are going to be kind and considerate to others all the time. You need to be realistic, right? Which is why I think you should not jump into an engagement with a woman straight away. Leave it at least a year. Go out with a woman for a year. Then maybe if you're satisfied with what you've seen over the year, have an engagement. I'm very much against whirlwind romances, whirlwind engagements, because a person could imply on you what they want to imply. They can be whoever they, you, they think you want them to be in order to get what they want out of you, okay? But you need to see the person behind the facade, if there is a facade. If there isn't, great. But you need to try and see the person behind a possible facade, okay? To know that you're, you are going to be marrying somebody of quality, somebody of good quality character, and somebody of good quality faith. She doesn't have to be a pop star. She doesn't have to be famous. She doesn't have to be uh, knock you off your feet gorgeous, okay? I think you need to have realistic standards. I think you need to be sexually attracted to the woman that you want to be with. That's that's a given. But I don't think she has to be uh, God's gift to men in the, in the looks department. I think that's not really the criteria here. And I think if, if, if you're looking for a woman that's a supermodel or God's gift to, to men, I think you're very superficial. 
That's what I think. Man to man, I think you're very superficial, right? Most important thing is that she has to be somewhat sexually attractive to you. She has to be sexually attractive enough for you, if you know what I mean. She needs to have a good character. She needs to be kind, considerate, uh, humble. Not all those things all the time, but she needs to have those traits. She needs to be a woman of God, a woman who loves the Lord, okay? Those three things are essential. I would say a fourth non-essential thing, but it's desirable thing, is she needs to be a passionate person. She needs to be somebody who has passions and follows them, okay? You know, what I've talked to you about, having a, a musical instrument or, or writing. She needs to have some sort of edge about, but that's really desirable, but not essential. The three essential things are um, needs to be sexually attractive enough, needs to have a good character, and needs to um, have a love for Jesus. As a Christian man, those should be your three fundamental uh, definites. So you shouldn't move past anything unless you can see those three things clear as daylight. Those are the absolute essential fundamental things for you to have a, as a Christian man in regards to a Christian woman. Okay? Meet her parents. You know, get on with her parents. Make sure, and that this is another desirable thing, not a uh, necessary thing. Desirable for her to care about you more than she cares about her own mother. I re I, I'm saying a desirable thing because it, it, it can be a little bit of an unrealistic standard to expect a woman to care about you more than she cares about her mother. But it really does help. It really does help if that if she is that way inclined. But I don't think for you it should be a deal breaker. I don't think it's fair on women to expect them to love you more than they love their mother. But it is something you should, perhaps should desire and perhaps should be encouraging that maybe, you know, you need to be seen as loved over time more than her own mother is loved. She will always love her own mother and there will always be a bond that she'll have with her own mother if her own mother is still alive or not an abuser. And if she is, I'm sorry about, no, I'm sorry for that, anyway. Um, so that is um, my 101 to Christ, single Christian young men wanting to get married. That is my advice to you in a nutshell. Thank you for watching.